for short. Also, a warm welcome to all office bearers of ICOL, academic staff, and professional service staff who are here for this session today. I am sure you will get to know them a lot better during your time at ICOL. To formally welcome you to the Kulia today, you will be addressed by the Dean of ICOL, Professor Dr. Farid Sufyan Shuaib. You will also be addressed by the Deputy Dean for Student Development and Community Engagement, Dr. Tajul Aris Ahmad Bustami, followed by the Deputy Dean for Academic and Industrial Linkages, Professor Dr. Ayman Nariman Muhammad Sulaiman, the Senior Assistant Director, Mr. Omar Sharif, and Dr. Nur Shuhadawati Muhammad Amin as Academic Advisor. So to open the ceremony, without further ado, it is my greatest pleasure to welcome the Dean of ICOL, Professor Farid Sufyan Shuaib, to deliver his speech. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, first, I would like to welcome um, all our students to Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws, although some of you may not be here in IUM, but we have started uh, the Ta'aruf week today with some modification. Uh, I suppose um, we need to be cognizant of the new norms. All, uh, our plan is to have uh, Ta'aruf week to have uh, introduction, to introduce you to Ahmad Rahim Kulia of Laws, to introduce you to the vision and mission of the Kulia, and to explain to you how you will proceed in your four years study uh, in Ahmad Rahim Kulia of Laws. Unfortunately, um, Allah had a greater planner. It seems that we could not continue with our plan. We need to do uh, the study and also the ta'aruf through remote mode. Uh, the, the, I will not go into detail on the uh, philosophy of the kulia because since we are online, uh, I suppose the attention span would be reduced. What I want to convey is that first, you should be mindful of the vision of the kulia when you start your journey in the kulia. That we are working towards achieving just laws, we are working towards achieving just legal system through the process of harmonization of Sharia and law. And hopefully, in the process of on the four-year studies, we will produce a balanced graduates. We will produce Muslim professionals that would contribute to the professions, that, could, uh, that would contribute to the industry, that would contribute to the nation. So that's what is unique in Ahmad Ibrahim, Kulia of Laws where there is emphasis on harmonization of Sharia and law. I suppose, if not all of you, most of you have chosen to come to Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws because you know you could learn Sharia and laws in this Kulia. In contrast to other law schools, you would have the opportunity to know the conventional laws and you have also the opportunity to know the Sharia. And for those of you who are ready, you would have the opportunity to continue on the fifth year to obtain a second degree, namely LLB Sharia Honours. So this is what unique to Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws. One of the unique things about Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws the combination of laws and sharia in the study, in the research, and of course, in the degree that you could obtain after four years or after five years. The other things in your mind, I suppose, is how you would be able to proceed with your study. 
within this pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. You had the, um, I suppose, unwelcome experience of the changes in the plan from face-to-face -face programs to online programs, starting with the Ta'aruf and also starting in next week where you start your study. Please be assured that we could still continue our teaching and learning, although remotely. We have done this in the last semester when PKP or Movement Control Order was introduced. Alhamdulillah, we had completed semester two of session 2019-2020 successfully. Inshallah, we can do the same in this coming semester. So please be in touch with your lecturers so that uh, they will contact you through emails, they will contact you through WhatsApp. If you do not, uh, if in the record you have given other numbers or you have given other email addresses that you are not using now, please make sure that the Kulia would have a copy of your WhatsApp number or your email, valid email addresses. So please be in touch. Uh, the Deputy Dean for Academic, Prof. Ayman, the Deputy Dean for Student Affairs, uh, Student Development and Community Engagement, uh, Dr. Tajul, the Academic Advisors and other officers and other lecturers will help you to navigate in these new norms. So that, that's the two things, I suppose, that I want to convey. First, Alhamdulillah, you have been chosen and you have registered for Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws. Please make full use of the curriculum and of the uh, facilities that we have in whatever ways that you can optimize them uh, through online or on-site later on. Second, uh, please do not have the anxiety, do not fear on this new norm. Inshallah, we can work together to ensure that you could successfully go through this teaching and learning remotely. Probably, hopefully, we pray that it's only a few weeks, then we can continue with the hybrid mode where we have face-to-face -face for tutorials and we have online for lectures. Unfortunately, I'm sorry that we cannot give you a, an exact timeline for how long the RTL or remote teaching and learning will continue because as you may notice of the uncertain time that we are in. So the, the details will be conveyed later on by the deputy deans, by the academic advisors and by the officers. Again, welcome to Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Laws. May Allah protect us, may Allah guide us, inshallah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor. It is now my pleasure to call upon the Deputy Dean for Student Development and Community Engagement, Dr. Tajul Ares Ahmad Bustami, to deliver his speech. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Dean of Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Laws, Prof. Farid Sofyan, Deputy Dean, Prof. Aiman, uh, uh, Academic Advisors, Senior Assistant Director, Staff of the uh, Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Laws, and students of International Islamic University of Malaysia, particularly iCool students. First of all, allow me to welcome you to this university, welcome you to Ahmad Ibrahim Kulia of Law. My name is Tajul Aris Ahmad Bustami. I'm a Deputy Dean for Student Development and Community Engagement. Yeah. Basically, next. Uh, Basically, my office deal with uh, these six uh, scopes. Number one, on the welfare and development of the students. 
welfare, for example, uh, in the past, we have provided a uh, uh, meal coupon for the students, food bank for the students, particularly those who are from B40 and selected M40. And we, we plan to continue this project this semester. We have provided as well uh, zakat assistance to the students, as well as uh, uh, students' financial assistance. Can, uh, through our cooperation with STATS as well as with the uh, endowments of the university. And then we, we also concerns about development of the students. Our signature program at ICOL is Ibadah Camp, yeah, where we plan to have Ibadah Camp for every level in every year. Yeah? And then we have as well the career symposium, uh, particularly to graduating students to expose them to the career opportunity outside there. Secondly, we concerned with the student exchange program. Yeah? We receive inbound student exchange program from uh, university outside, as well as we send our students to, uh, to several countries to expose them to the new culture, new knowledge, and new environment. Number three, we also process application for leave of absence, if any. Okay? For example, in case of six students, in case of students have a valid reason for them to apply for the absence, as well as we process the application for readmission. Okay? For example, a student is quite unfortunate to be dismissed from this university, but we allow another the opportunity to them to readmit. Yeah? Number four, we deal with the disciplinary issues. Yeah? We are the enforcer of the uh, university students' rules and regulation. Number five, we also deal with the alumni. Okay? We encourage the alumni to return to the university to contribute to the, to the university in terms of the expertise, financial, and so on. And, number, and lastly, um, uh, we deal with the student activities. Next, student activities. Okay. Currently, we have three societies in ICOL. The Umbrella Society will be Law Student Society. So anything, any issues, any programs, can, would, uh, this, this society will, will deal with. And number two, we have also Moots and Competition Club. Okay, this is our strength, actually. When the society look at ICOL, they know that our strength is Moots. We managed to, 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 to excel in various uh, national and international competition. Okay, we have this uh, special club on this. And lastly, we have Legal Aid Club, particularly to assist the Kulia on the community service. Last slide. Okay. For further inquiries, you may contact Puan uh, Zanaria okay, at this address. That's all. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi Thank you very much, Dr. Tajul. Now I call upon the Deputy Dean for Academic and Industrial Linkages, Professor Aiman Nariman Muhammad Sulaiman, to deliver her speech. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, my name is Aiman, uh, Deputy Dean for Academic Affairs and Industry Linka uh, Linkages. Let me just start by uh, echoing the warm welcome and the sentiment uh, that Prof. Farid and Dr. Tajul shared earlier on, um, as well as uh, probably share my hopes and aspirations uh, to the new students, to the, in to the new students' intake. Um, and let me also share with you, uh, I suppose, some important information regarding your study plan. So um, while my office deals with uh, academic matters, that means anything related to your academic uh, studies, um, I probably would like to focus more on the study plan. 
Um, as you uh, enter the faculty uh, and as you proceed um, from one level of studies to another, um, probably you'll be listening to this constant reminder of go have a look at your study plan. So what is it actually? Um, we have uploaded the study plan for the LLB and LLBS program uh, on the website. So uh, perhaps when you have some free time, uh, that's a nice way of saying that you have to do so. If you have some free times, you want to have a look at it. Um, you could look at the study plan and um, consider this as a roadmap, right? It lets you uh, imagine and plan uh, how you would like to have your four years of studies proceed. Uh, you'll be able to look at the study plan, you'll be able to plan uh, and imagine what courses you would have to take. Um, and in certain cases, you will be able to choose certain topics um, as elective papers. So there is that flexibility. Um, you would have to look at the study plan uh, on this basis. There are courses which are core courses. Um, for the purpose of being given the LLB uh, degree, you will have to uh, go through these courses. There are also courses which are listed as electives. Now, if you look at the study plan, uh, study plan later on, you will see that uh, the courses which are elective are already listed there. So this will be offered um, hopefully on a case-to-case -case basis. Uh, we will try to accommodate uh, students' requests for this. Um, and uh, there's no guarantee that all this uh, on the list now, currently there are 27 elective papers or elective courses. There's no guarantee that all 27 will be offered. So you need to be smart, um, probably as you proceed from the first year into the second year, you would have an inkling of where you would like to focus on in terms of area of practice once you graduate. So uh, you'll be able to practically choose lah, yeah? uh, the concentration of courses. For example, if you are interested in uh, family human rights, you'll be able to look at those courses and concentrate more on them. If you're fascinated with commercial uh, transaction, contract, then there are a lot, a lot of case, uh, courses that is offered that will assist you to get more in-depth knowledge on this area of the law. Okay? So that's uh, on the slide is the Bachelor of Law Honours Graduation Requirement. Uh, that's your Kulia core courses, and those are the Kulia elective courses. Yeah? Uh, the specific uh, courses are available on the study plan, which is available on, uh, IUM, on uh, ICOL's uh, webpage. So that's one, yeah? Uh, before that, let me just um, uh, give you some pointers, uh, especially since you are uh, new students, new intake. Um, I suppose some of you who are coming into the um, law school from CFS, you'd probably have uh, some familiarity with how uh, the courses are structured, but probably for students who are coming into the faculty based on direct intake, STPM, A-levels, IB, um, this, this information will be very uh, useful and I, I, I hope you can take, uh, take it down, right? Um, now, imagine that you are looking at IUM um, website. Uh, you will have a, a web page where you will see uh, there's, at the very bottom, there is a, um, um, probably a link to what we call I Maklum, I M A L U U M. So this is the main student uh, resource um, link that you will need to be familiar with. So uh, uh, once you have your um, uh, metric number, go, go to this uh, link and have a look at what is in there. Uh, all the courses that you have registered for, uh, the information will be there. So from on iMaklum, you'll be able to see, um, you know, when your lecturer try to communicate with you uh, online, uh, then they will use a platform for us lecturers, which we call iTaklim. Uh, and that information on iTaklim will be then sent to you uh, to your iMaklum uh, portal. So that's why um, Prof. Farid mentioned earlier on that you need to update your contact number, right? So your email address as well as your um, phone number will be made available to your, to your lecturers. Um, so, okay. Now, there are also other student resources that you should be familiar with. Uh, I suppose you can go to AMAD, which is the Academic um, Management uh, Admission Division. There's also this... Um, call it. 
the IUM uh, general website, ICOL's website, the IMAKLUM, uh, AMAT, as well as um, one very important rule that you need to be familiar with is what we call short form SAPIR. Okay. Okay. All right. SAPIR is Student Academic Performance Evaluation Regulation. So this will include um, what are your rights and responsibilities uh, in terms of uh, what you can do, your ad, the adding courses, dropping courses, if you want to repeat, what, uh, and uh, so on, yeah? So, okay. no. Um, the law school um, actually offers two programs. The first is the LLB Honours, and the second one is the LLB Sharia Honours. So, for for the sake of um, making it easy for discussion, we will call this the LB deg degree as the single uh, single stream, and the Bachelor of Law Sharia as the double double degree stream. Um, I'm having difficulty viewing the <laughs> viewing the slide because I'm quite short. Anyway, so if you look at uh, the single major stream, uh, the maximum uh, sorry the study period is four years. That means eight semester. Uh, for the Bachelor of Laws, you have uh, that first four years for the Bachelor of Laws. And if you meet the requirement, then you'll be able to continue into the fifth year. All right? uh, the Bachelor of Law Sharia Honours is a very unique feature of the law school. And it opens up a wider career opportunity for students who are qualified to do the course. So if you are thinking of becoming a practitioner in both the civil courts and the Sharia courts, then I suggest that you consider taking on the Bachelor of Laws Sharia uh, program. So how do we do this? You enter into the law school. Everybody, as a matter of right, uh, you are enrolled into the Bachelor of Laws. Uh, if you fulfill certain criteria, the most important is your completing uh, a certain level of Arabic requirement, then you can um, indicate that you want to enter into the Bachelor of Laws Sharia program. So that means if you look at the course, uh, study plan later on, you will see that there are courses which, for example, is offered under Bachelor of Laws, um, Islamic legal system, which will be offered in uh, English. For those students who are registered for the Bachelor of Laws, then they'll be doing this course uh, in the Arabic language. Okay, can we move on the slides? Okay, right. So this is roughly your um, study, uh, study, study years, level of studies as well as the semester. So you have C one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have four years, four semester for the LB, and the fifth year additional two more semesters for the LBS. Um, there, the Kulia of Law also has a program called Legal Attachment Program. Uh, if you look on, at the slide, the third semester LAP. Um, can we move back? Okay, third semester LAP. Uh, that particular program is what is known as the industry linkages. Now, this gives you an opportunity to uh, do your um, attachment with uh, legal firms, with uh, regulatory bodies, with uh, the courts. Next. So this, the next slide shows you the uh, specific courses that you have to take um, to get the degree. Now if, you not, if you look at the slide, you will see law, LAW, and SHA. These are Kulia courses. So uh, anything that you need to get clarification on regarding courses um, starting with the code, uh, the code LAW or SHA, then you'd be able to come and seek uh, uh, advice from my office or from your academic advisor. But courses like LM, uh, LQ, these are MPU, UNGS, these are courses which is conducted by um, the university. So uh, we will be able to um, show you or uh, direct you to the right person, but we won't be able to resolve matters on, on this because these are not uh, courses which is delivered by the law school. Next, please. Can we go on? Okay. All right, so that's the law attachment program. Uh, the final year. Uh, all right, and then we have the courses. Move on. 
courses for the um, LBS. So there's a lot of similarity, except that, like I said, there are some courses which you have to take uh, in Arabic. Um, now, can we go to the last page, I think? Okay. All right. Can we stop here? Oh, thank you. Now, the academic workload is very important. Um, if you look at the study plan for the first semester, first year, level one, year, uh, first semester, uh, the credit hour is 17.5 or 18.5. 17.5 is for the LB and 18.5 is for the LBS. Well, we like to uh, propose, but at the end of the day, Allah disposes. Yeah? So even if you have a plan in place, there could be some glitches along the way. It's a four-year journey. Uh, in LBS case, it's a five-year journey. There could be glitches. You could have probably challenges in terms of um, financials, hopefully not, but these are the challenges that, that could arise during your course of study. So um, those challenges could affect yeah, your, your results. It, it could, um, hopefully not, but it could uh, bring down your CGPA. You could be faced with a situation where you would have to maybe repeat a course because you are not able to complete it successfully. Uh, so if that happens, then you will have to understand that study plan and it's no longer in its original form applicable to you. So there will have to be some adjustments along the way. Uh, so the, the, the academic workload, the range of CGPA and the range of credit hours allowed is on the basis that we do not want to overburden students who are already facing challenges dealing with the heavy workload. So in some cases, there would be a limit on the number of courses that you are allowed to take per semester depending on your credit hours, uh, depending on your CGPA. Okay? Can you move on? All right. Now, um, we are going to start on the basis of remote teaching and learning. Uh, the online lectures will not be possible at all because of the large number of students. But the tutorial, our initial plan was to have face-to-face -face because of the smaller number of students in the class. But uh, due to circumstances and the, develop, uh, the evolving um, challenges due to COVID-19, um, probably we will have to go to remote teaching and learning for both lectures and tutorials. Let me just share with you, uh, if you look at your study plan, you will see that a, a course, for example, Malaysian Legal System, the credit hours is three. So what does that mean? That means there will be two hours of lecture and one hour of tutorial. Uh, when you go to your iMaklum, uh, and when you have done your registration, when you look, you look at the registration uh, page, you will see that you are, there are, for example, a, a course might have more than one section. So you, you could have law contract uh, part one, you would have section one, section two, section three, section four, with their uh, time, uh, lecture time, as well as the tutorial hours. So uh, for those who are coming from the CFS, you would know that you'll be able to select, right? Uh, you will only have to select uh, one section, that means you will have to attend two lectures plus one tutorial. That's why I suggest that you will go to your iMaklum so that you'll be able to get notification from your lecture for the first time. Uh, when would the tutorial be conducted and what are the arrangements that your lecturer would want to make with you and agree upon uh, in terms of delivery uh, of the uh, course. Yeah? Uh, in general, courses uh, at the law school would have a range of 40% to 60% continuous assessment. These are what we call coursework. Uh, there'll be assignments, there'll be presentations, we'll be testing you on oral skills, on, on uh, sol uh, problem solving uh, issues, and then a component will be based, uh, will be put aside uh, for probably 60 to 40% for the final exam. There are some courses which will be assessed entirely uh, continuously throughout the semester, and so there will be no final exam for that. For, um, okay, your lecturer will be able to explain to you. Uh, what are these courses and how the assessment is going to be conducted. Uh, next, please. Okay. So these are some of the types of continuous assessments. Um, don't worry, we're not going to impose all on you. Like I said earlier, your lecturer will be able to uh, agree upon uh, the component, um, bearing in mind you know, the uh, availability of the students and whether you'll be able to uh, select one uh, compared to the other. Maybe things like uh, role play will be a bit difficult to, to roll out um, in, in the context of uh, online learning, but uh, let's see how things go here. Okay. Next, that's our UM grading system. We aspire to achieve A, 
and we aspire to avoid uh, C and below. But like I said, uh, we proposes and uh, God disposes. So uh, I hope there will be communication between the students and the lecturer uh, in terms of how um, we could assist each other to make sure that all of our students uh, obtain quality education. Right? Can we move on the slides? Okay. Proceed. All right. Now, uh, one more thing. Um, you have a four-year study plan in general. Uh, but like I said earlier, there could be some challenges. Uh, so students are allowed, or students are given actually a maximum of uh, six years um, to fulfill or complete their LB program. Yeah, hopefully, uh, that will not be the case for all the new intake coming into the faculty uh, in October 2020. Next one. So the rest, I suppose, uh, information about uh, this one would be relevant for your um, LBS, for those who want to go into the LBS, uh, the, EP the, EP uh, the APT test. Okay. Can we just speed up the process? Right. You'll have to fill in the form. Uh, and I suppose the most important uh, information here is who to get in touch with. Can we go to the slide on that? Okay. Now, um, once you register, make sure you print out your confirmation slip, yeah? Because then you'll be able to see whether you are really registered for the course or not. Um, this is quite important because uh, at the end of the day, if your name is not in the, um, in the, in the group, of students registered for the course, you might have problem uh, in terms of examination and therefore that could affect your study plan. Yeah. Do we have uh, a slide on detail of person to contact? I thought there is a last slide on that. Sister Nisa, is that Okay. Um, I'll be communicating with the Law Society, uh, and they'll also be um, communicating with the student body, the new students as existing students, um, and hopefully um, we'll be able to go through this semester uh, with as uh, little stress uh, and a lot of uh, beneficial uh, outcome. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor. I now welcome the Senior Assistant Director, Mr. Omar Sharif. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome the new students to our faculty. I call. Okay, my name is Omar Sharif bin Sagulamid. I'm academic officer in ICOL. Okay, uh, anything related to your courses, everything, you can see me and my officers. Yeah, we are in uh, level three ICOL office. I mean, uh, Prof. Farid and Prof. Tajul and Prof. Aiman covered already the study plan everything. I think the most important is uh, all new students, you should follow the study plan accordingly because uh, I noticed that some of students, they are, they are taking the semester two subjects. It's not advisable. I mean, if you got any problem or you got uh, lower credit hours to carry, you have to see the officers first. Then uh, we will process that things accordingly. Uh, I think uh, nothing to say more. I pass it to MC. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Omar. I now call upon Dr. Nushu Hadawati Muhammad Amin as academic advisor. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. 
thank you uh, MC Dr. Arich Toila. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, a bit to Professor Dr. Farid Sufian, uh, the Dean of High Call, Professor Dr. Aiman Nariman, um, Deputy Dean of Academic and Industrial Leakages, Dr. Tajul Aris Ahmad Mustami, Deputy Dean of Student Affairs and Alumni, and uh, Mr. Omar Sag uh, Sagul Amit, the Senior Assistant Director, all Head of Departments and uh, members of uh, High Call, and all students who are watching the stream, um, this online. Yeah? Streaming online. Okay, first and foremost, I would like to congratulate all of you yeah, for being accepted to be part of the um, Kuliah, yeah, Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Laws. I believe most of you are from Matriculation Center. We also have local and international students, yeah, um, direct intake uh, students. Yeah. So, welcome to Ahmad Ibrahim Kuliah of Laws. I hope that all of you will have a pleasant and uh, joyful journey yeah, throughout your study here. Right, my name is Dr. Nur Shohadawati Muhammad Amin. You can call me uh, Shohada, Dr. Shohada or Dr. Shu. I am actually one of the three academic advisors in ICOL. I am actually representing them. Um, the other two are uh, Dr. Wan Rami Zahwan Muhammad and Dr. Husna Fauzi. Yeah? Both of them are from Islamic Law Department, while I myself is from Civil Law Department. All right, I am here actually to explain the role of academic advisor eh, as far as the students in ICOL are concerned. In general, eh, academic advisor, we are responsible for providing educational guidance and assistance for students by planning schedules, recommending courses, and determining appropriate education solutions eh, for different type of students. Specifically, the duties are as follows. Eh? So I'll break down into four um, duties. Eh? Um, so that you are clear eh? what, does, um, what are the roles of academic advisor. So firstly, as an academic advisor, um, we are here to advise the students on academic matters. So here, academic matters here refers to issues like registration of subjects or tutorials. We have a problem with the registration or clashes of subjects, withdrawal of subjects, eh? just to name a few. Eh? For example, eh, if you're thinking of dropping a subject, because you feel that perhaps you cannot cope with the subject or for some other reasons, like following friends, eh, because you, you, you notice that your friend is dropping the subject and you feel like I might, well, you want to do it as well, or perhaps some person a problem. Here, academic advisor can give you some advices eh, before you proceed with your plan of dropping the subject. So normally, advice will be given based on your current CGPA as well as the current workload. Eh. Um, taking into consideration the issue that you have at hand. Secondly, yeah, academic advisor can also help students yeah, on their study plan. So as mentioned uh, before by Prof Ayman, yeah, study plan is actually is a summary yeah, of the subject requirements of your course and indicates when planned subject, uh, subjects should be studied. For example, you are in your first year, before you can proceed to second year, you have to complete your law of thoughts and law of contracts. As mentioned earlier, you cannot take contract one and contract two simultaneously. It means that if you fail contract one, you have to repeat the subject. Only if you pass, you will be allowed to take contract two. So here, make sure you pass the required subjects before you can proceed to the next level of study. It is important, therefore, for you to follow your study plan. Of course, taking into consideration of uh, challenges that you might have, you might stumble upon eh, in your study here. Eh. All right, thirdly, academic advisor's duty is to work with uh, Deputy, De Deputy Dean of Student Affairs and Deputy Dean of Academic to monitor students' performance. We will monitor both academic performance and the student engagement in a proactive manner, and we will render advice on constructive strategies to be taken by the students to enable improvement if needed. For example, eh, we will have this um, personal portfolio of the students or perhaps a personal development plan that cater to that personal student. For example, say if you fail law of contract, you can always come to us to ask for our advice on how to get better results. Of course, you can always consult with the lecturer teaching the subject, but perhaps you are shy, you can always, always come to us for some advisors as we are also lecturers. Eh? And lastly, Academic advisor also have the duty to inform students on various resources eh, here uh, in IIUM. We serve as a, uh, as a connection between students and other resources. In this context, 
we provide contact information and guide students to resources regarding, for example, your residential life in Mahala. Uh, I know at this moment of time, perhaps some of you are in um, your Mahala and some of you are not here. All right, student affairs, financial aid, or in, uh, mental health counselling. We will try to figure out solutions yeah, to a variety of problems by directing the students to the correct resource. Although we do have specific functions, but our overall mission is to help ways, in ways that we will allow for overall student success. Since we cannot have face-to-face -face meeting eh, because of the current situation that we are in right now, so if you, have, if you wish to contact us, you can always drop us an email. Okay, it's me, uh, Dr. Shuhadawati, Dr. Wan Ramiza, or uh, Dr. Husna Fawzi. Eh? Inshallah, we will try to attend to you as soon, as soon as possible. I think that's all from me. I wish you all the best. And most importantly, have fun learning in iCool and stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Nushuha Dawati. Okay, it just remains for me to close this event. Uh, that is the end of the session today from iCall. On behalf of everyone at iCall, we are delighted that you've chosen to join our learning community. We wish you all the best of time here. You've come to a great place, a great university, and we hope you enjoy your time at Ahmad Ibrahim, Guliya of Loss. Until we meet again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.